Welcome to the Runpreneur Podcast with me, your host, Sierra Carter, where you're listening to the number one podcast that will help you increase your energy and run your life. Let's go. Hey guys, and welcome to another episode of the Runpreneur Podcast. It's a beautiful day outside, but it's even better weather for running. So, and that's what we're going to be talking about today is going through the past six, maybe oops, seven years of the Florida or Publix Marathon, whatever you want to call it. It has a few names. It's evolved over the years. But I have Kay here on the podcast today, and she's run quite a few of them. And we're going to go over them year by year, discuss the setup of the race, give you some pictures to show you what you're running around, and give you some thoughts because it's coming up fast for next year. This race always comes up so quickly every year we do it. And next year is the year of the coconut. And it's on the top 10 races or marathons to run. So we're going to give you a full overview, show you the medals we've gotten in the past, give you our stories, and even talk about, you know, if you should run it or not. So I want to introduce Kay because she's been running this and she's been running longer than I have. So Kay, go ahead and introduce yourself. How long have you been running? Who are you? And why do you love running? I've been running since my freshman year of high school, and I came from soccer, and then for some reason, I decided to switch to cross country, <laughs> and then my first half marathon was my senior year of high school, because a lot of my cross country friends were starting to run some of them, so I'm like, you know, it's something I want to try. Then I didn't do another one for four years, <laughs> and then four years later, I really wanted to run half marathons again, and I really don't know why, but here I am. <laughs> what was your first half marathon? It was actually the music Melbourne Music Half Marathon, oh, which so is the one we're talking about today. Yeah, oh, oh my gosh. Okay, what a coincidence. I actually didn't know yes. that, so it's not me asking a legal oh. question. So, <laughs> so that's yes, awesome. So, yeah, in 2013. Wow. Okay. So that's about eight years ago. Now, what made you not want to run another one for four years in between then? I you was just... way under trained and I just mm. hurt a lot. Yeah. <laughs> and it was not fun my first time. That does Like, happen. I'm never doing that again. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all have to get that one time out of the way. I didn't run a yeah. half half marathon for my first long race. I did a 10 miler. I did the, I, what's it, Tale of, not Tale of, the, Tale of the Dragon. The one up in Vera. I did that 10 mile for my first oh, one. Yeah. Did, Excalibur. 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 I didn't train yeah. for it. Somebody told me, oh, if you run ten, seven miles on the treadmill every day, you'll be fine for 10 miles. No. No, absolutely no. not. <laughs> so, but I was somehow hooked after that, and I loved it if I trained correctly. So then the next one I did, I think was the Publix, Publix marathon in 2017. So that was a while ago, but this is, yeah. Yeah. So, so looking back, so out of all, cause we've been running for a little bit before we get into the reviews and what it's about, what has been your favorite half marathon you've ever run? I think it is the Publix half marathon. Yeah. And I'm not just saying yeah. that to say it, but it's a great race around town and right. I love just everybody here is local and right. they know who I know and then people come from Orlando and all over Florida to run it so it's a great race yeah I have to say that's it was always so weird to me thinking this runs by our house these yeah. a lot of these people running this marathon aren't from here and they're running by my house you know mm -hmm. you just don't think about it when you go to other races when you run by somebody's house it's such a you know, it's finally somebody in your lives there. <laughs> yeah, somebody actually lives there. I'm running by their house on a race. Like, they can't get out of their house this morning because I decided me and like a thousand other yeah. people wanted to show up and run for fun, and they can't get out of their house. I've always wondered what they had to do because you and yeah, I, we can like get out other streets. They can't. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some people yeah, are directly every... on that. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead. So let's go ahead and start talking about exactly what the scenery is on this marathon. So we have a marathon that they offer, a half marathon, and the 5K is newer, and so is the 10K. 10K was new this year. So we're not gonna talk mm -hmm. about the 5K or 10K yet. But have you ever done the full marathon, or have you just done the half? Just the half. Yeah, yeah. I've only done the half too. Because if you look at the map, for everybody listening, 
the full marathon is a double lap. And for some people, they love that because they have goal markers, time setting. They know where they need to be at what time, especially if they already did the first lap. For someone like me, I'd probably lose it halfway through and probably just run home to my house because it's on the way. <laughs> I'm about halfway on that loop. So I'd probably exactly. just call it a day and be like, I got to 18 miles. That's close enough. And then head home for a snack or something. <laughs> But I'm just not a fan of loop marathon. So that's what the marathon is. And neither one of us have run it, but we've run the half several times where we know the full marathon is the same just twice. But it's a great, it's beautiful. So it starts down in the bottom by, I would say boat ramps, down Front Street, if you're familiar with Melbourne. And it starts to run up US1, if you're, again, if you're familiar with the streets, along the river. Now, I'm not sure how you, 2013 went, but what kind of stops did they have along the way in the music marathon? Did they have a lot of music going on? There was a lot of music along the way. And then the one thing that I always remember from that race is they had gummy bears at mile like 10, and that was the greatest thing ever. Because <laughs> I don't remember much from it because it was so long ago, but that was still <laughs> the highlight of the wreck race. I, they have they had that sense? I don't think I've no. remembered gummy bears. I was so disappointed the second time I ran, <laughs> just because they're gummy bears. <laughs> not, were they the caffeine gummy bears or regular gummy bears? The, Haribu. the Haribu. Haribu gummy bears. Haribu. Haribu. Yes. Haribu. Oh, oh. Yeah. And they ever had those scents? Oh, I would love those. Those are fantastic. Yeah. So but okay, there was still a lot of music. So. Uh, was every mile was the guy at the top of the causeway with mm -hmm. his piano was he the there piano man. so yes. that's what makes this race probably one of the more famous ones because every single year except for 2021 because it's it was a bad race year they've had a guy with a white baby grand piano bruce marion bruce marion up there at the top of the causeway with a white baby grand piano yeah. and when we pull up our pictures, you'll see this piano because we have a, we have quite a lot of pictures with him at the top of the causeway because there's a photographer there and you're running by, you wave at the camera and he's in the background playing you a song to your misery because you had to get up to the top of the causeway to get up there. For people not fully aware of kind of the layout of the race, you go along the river, but then you have to go up two causeways. Kate, what do you think of the first causeway versus the second causeway? Oh, it's a, it's a trek. Because it's at mile five, too, and that's when everybody's starting to hurt. But then you reach that top, and it's so satisfying to see him there. And then people are posing on their piano, too, and then people are just going crazy. It's so fun to watch. I've never seen people pose on the oh, piano. Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah, there's a lot, mm -mm, lot of pictures of it, too, if you scroll through, like, the race pictures. People oh, are just fantastic. laying on top of it. <laughs> I've never seen this. This is great. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wow. Um, now, how about the second second causeway? Because this was the causeway that has killed me multiple times. Yep. 2020, it definitely killed me a lot. Well, all the times I've ran, it definitely. Right. But then, again, once you get to the top, it's just a straight shot down. You see mile 13 and then the finish it line. Is. So it, that one's even more satisfying. <laughs> I, you, the, to get to the top of this second causeway. So running around, so you get to mile five, you go over the first causeway. I swear, I'm not sure if it's because I run this causeway a lot. It's not as steep as the second causeway. Now you go down the causeway and that's usually where in the past they've had the relays where you trade off with your relay partner. And then you go mm -hmm. around the corner and straight away down this road called South Patrick. And at one point you go kind of through the neighborhoods, but it's not, it's not a whole lot. It's nothing really off your, out of your way. And you then take another right and head back. So it's just a major square along the water the entire time, except when you get to the super really nice, beautiful houses, again, that we're blocking that they can't get out for the day. Um, and you go over the second causeway. Now, every single year, the second causeway has been the problem child of mine because I was not able to get my legs to get up that causeway at mile 12, and I think 13's at the top, or is it at the very bottom? I think 13's at the bottom of that causeway. So you're at the very, very, very end of the causeway. 
And I know last year for 20, this past year, 2021, I thought I was going to pass out on the way up the causeway because the storm rolled in, which we'll get to a storm rolled in and it got really hot and muggy out of nowhere. And then that's when I was going over it and I thought I was going to pass out. So starting with 2013, do you have the medal to show? Yes, I do. So this is your first medal. Ooh. My first half marathon medal. Oh, I like it. Like, yeah, that, is that a fun one? Like, oh, it's a causeway with palm trees and everything. Yeah, people running over it. Fifth anniversary. Then, fifth anniversary. Oh, fifth anniversary. So that was their fifth marathon they've had. So this has been going on since 2008. Eight. Wow. Yeah, 2008. Mm -hmm. Nice. I like that medal. And then you didn't yeah. come back until 2018 for this marathon specifically, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so do you <laughs> – let's talk about 2018 yes. before we go on to another one. So 2018, <laughs> what was your experience in 2018? <laughs> it was so hot. <laughs> so hot. Unbelievably hot. And then I was in way too many layers too, so I did not have a good time at that set race. <laughs> I was in thick compression socks. I had fuzzy oh leggings on. It was a hot mess, literally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I remember that yeah, year because it started out chilly. No, no, it didn't. That whole week was chilly. It was a little and that chilly. Week, yes, the yeah, whole week. The whole week was cold. Mm -hmm. And then that one day, it just decided to get yep. as hot as it could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and at mile 12, actually, speaking of the last causeway, some lady just saw me struggling, and it was so nice. She just gave me her electrolyte drink. She's like, you need to drink this. And it was right before that last causeway, and it was so nice. <laughs> <laughs> Did they have pickle juice at that time? Did they have pickle juice in yeah. 2018? I, yeah, I think so. I think that's normally at mile 7. I know there was mimosas on this course. I think it was that year, too. On 2018? Too. When were, where were the mimosas? It's like off. Yeah. Oh, the private It was a road. random. Okay, that makes sense. I missed <laughs> that. I think that was a pre-COVID thing that we may never see again. Everybody giving out mimosas. Yeah, don't say that. I don't know. I'm telling you. I just, <laughs> I know. Uh, we're all crying inside. I've only, I've only drank mimosas on one race, and that's because I twisted my ankle on a rock, and I was hobbling through and i figured mimosas and fireball will probably get me through the rest of the race <laughs> <laughs> right yeah that was exactly great how it went. so 2018 i have the medal right here i know you have the medal too we've got the year of the pineapple yep. let's see if we can see so we have a cute pineapple here let's see if i can bring it up for you yep there oh yours is looking better yeah. why is yours yours is blue that's so nice oh that's good there we go yeah, put on the light. thank you and this, okay, I was just, I was telling, I was talking about this right before we started the show. This was probably my favorite medal out of all of them. Just because, I don't oh, know. Really? I, I really like pineapple. Does it, have a, um, <laughs> it doesn't have a bottle opener. Oh. 2019, though, did have a bottle opener on the back. So the 2019 oh. was a strawberry one. Oh, yeah. Because it was the year of the strawberry. So if you're listening to this, every single year it has a new fruit. It's after new fruit, except the only year it was not after a fruit was the year it was, I think it switched over to the Florida Marathon. So it went from the Music Man Marathon to the Florida Marathon. And that year was 2017, and it had, and it was a, there you go, spin it. It was Florida with a gator medallion in the middle. And it spun. This was what got me to do this marathon, or half marathon. Not the race itself, because I still wasn't a racer. I was like, oh, I guess everybody else is doing it. <laughs> I guess I have to do it. It's nice metal, at least. But the 20, 2018 was then the pineapple. 2019 was then the year of the strawberry. Did you do 2019? No, I did the 5K that year in pouring grain. Did, you did the 5K of this? Mm-hmm. It was the Florida oh. I Associates 5K. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Did you, um, it, yeah. was it, what? Cause there was a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah, there was a Saturday and Sunday. Okay, so it wasn't even the day of the race. It was a whole nother day. No, that one was the day of the race. Was it the day before? I think it was the I day I thought before. that was the one year that they did it the day 
of, and then the next year they did it the day before. I could be wrong on that. All, all the years that I did it, it was a 5K, 8K, and a run a car to call thing. I forgot about the 8K. They do have it. They used to have the 8K. 5K and car to call thing. Yes, that's right. And the mascot dash. Yes, they had. Yeah, they used to have all yeah. those races. All the, all the mascots. And mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah, all the mascots. Now they only oh, have yeah. so they had a 5K. They have a 10K half and full. So they don't have mm-hmm. any of the more, I guess, I, I call them exotic races. <laughs> gimmick. You know, like the gimmick, like the 8K. Like, who, what, how many miles is an 8K? Nobody even trains for that. Yeah, nobody trains for an 8K. What is an 8K? You know, 5K plus how many? And then um, a 5K, of course, like that's pretty straightforward. We all 3.1. love our 5Ks. Yeah. 3.1. Um, oh, wow. I didn't even, I forgot about all those dashes and stuff. Now, going on, 2020, year of the avocado, how did you do in this This one? This is my favorite race. I had the best experience this year because it was nice and chilly and everything just kind of clicked. This is the year I almost broke two hours, but that causeway. I'm telling you, I'm telling you that causeway is a killer. Yeah, it's the causeway. That causeway is a killer. Now, 2021, you you didn't do 2021, right? Mm-mm. I spectated. You did. You did. And yeah. you told me that you saw me and I was in the zone. <laughs> you were way too in the zone. I'm telling you, this past year, I struggled because I went out the night before and drank a little bit too much wine, which I never do. I never drink wine. And I did the night before this race because I was like, I've done it five times. I can do this. I had a splitting headache. So here's a medal for 20... This is 2021. That's the hangover medal? Yeah. This is the hangover medal. <laughs> it's pretty big, but but big. it came with a bottle opener. Oh. So it's good. Yeah, 20, it, yeah. 20 did not come with a bottle opener, but this one's actually my favorite medal. I know <gasps> you don't really like avocados. avocados, but. So the funny story about the avocados, I'm actually allergic to avocado. Yeah. <laughs> so... <laughs> so the minute I saw that it was the year of the avocado, I was like, I got to sign up. And when we flip through our pictures, we'll explain a little bit more on that. So speaking of the pictures, can we pull up the pictures? And we'll, we'll just go through and we'll tell the story behind this picture and see who comes out with the best story. <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, for everybody that is listening to this on a podcast, I am going to explain each picture to you. Oh, everybody's favorite. So this one is the Pink Florida Beer Co. Lemonade. Uh, that's not lemonade. That's actually beer. And I for- think it was like rosé beer that they had mm. that year. It was really good. I think that was also the year I turned 21, so I was like happily accepting it as a race gift. Yeah, 2019, I turned 21, and there's it next to the little strawberry metal man. Mm -hmm. So there's not a huge story behind this other than, yep, I was 21, and I made it through that race. Can you imagine I used to run without buying or getting beer at the end? All right, next one. All right, up next, that... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so this year that was that was still 2019 so first year I turned 21 I had a client she lived along so okay so if you can't see this on the podcast it's me running over the causeway I'm at the top of the causeway and I'm it's pouring rain and I'm holding up a vine of grapes and I'm smiling so what happened at this one um, was I ran by my client and she handed me grapes as I was running by. Now, I was flying on this one. This was one of my PRs. And I, I, I attribute, attribute it to the grapes that she gave me every single time. Because I was hungry. I needed a little bit of a pick-me-up. And I kept eating those. People looked at me like so weird that I was just carrying this vine of grapes <laughs> the entire time. And I couldn't believe I didn't choke on them. But it became a tradition at this race. All right, next picture. Okay. This looks like a fun picture to tell a story about. Yeah, that was my first one. So I was 17 in this picture. And then that's my dad in the blue hoodie. And my mom took the picture. And then to the right is the neighborhood that I grew up in. So it was so cool that they could walk down the street and cheer me on. 
and you can see the different elements. It was, I guess, freezing because he's in that hoodie and clogs, and I'm in a sports bra and spandex, and now it's just an ongoing joke with my family. <laughs> so if we can't see it on the pod- podcast, there here's Kay standing. Is that you said that's your who is that in the hoodie? My dad Are you, standing with your dad, and there's actually blood dripping down her knees oh yeah that one too Some, <laughs> forget about that. someone is sit, <laughs> like looking at her behind behind her tying their shoe and everybody's <laughs> dressed up and she's just in a sports bra and shorts and she's just like it's fine i'm bleeding i'm cold i didn't train for this but i'm yeah, gonna keep I, going i fell at mile three and a half of that Ooh. one um i actually kept my car key in my sports bra at the time not recommended so that went flying i didn't even know that i lost it some oh, no. guy chased me down <laughs> like you dropped your car key. Was it was a rough time. oh no oh my well this this picture was definitely a live and learn picture yes i learned a lot <laughs> all right up next all right so this is this is my year of the avocado so they actually when i went to get my race packet pickup Again, I'm allergic to avocados, and they kept handing me avocados as I was getting my packet because they said, oh, we have too many. Just keep taking them. Just keep taking them. And so I took this picture because if you know me, you know, I'm, I'm like, highly allergic to avocados. So this had to be one of those, like, I don't know, just ironic moments. All right, next. Kay. Yep. There it is. <gasps> yeah that's the sign that my mom made for me because again my mom could cheer me on from the course and it says guac a mile in my shoes with a picture of somebody <laughs> wearing avocado <laughs> shoes <laughs> that's i love this so this is a sign yeah. of kate just holding up her sign yeah. guac a mile in my shoes i love it yeah. oh here she is again she has an avocado shirt on. What does your shirt say? It says, I know I'm extra. <laughs> and then a picture of an avocado. <laughs> I love themed races. I will always dress up for them. I love. Do you have anything coconut for this next year? No, I need to figure something out, though. I don't have much time. <laughs> I know. February's around the corner. It's, it's already March. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Ah, uh, this one. Oh, here's the baby grand piano. Okay, so this year... This was 2020, so this was actually, you know, a month prior to the pandemic. The grand piano this year, looking at the picture, so it's me at the top of the causeway running by with my chicken arms looking down because I didn't see the camera, and usually I see the camera, and there's usually a baby grand that's white, but this year, this one was a regular black baby grand piano, but that's what we're talking about when we say, like, there's a music marathon the baby grand is always at the very top of the first causeway to get you through um playing that misery song. <laughs> the misery song? Yeah, I'm telling you. It's a misery song. Yeah, I'm sure I'm sure it's not called the misery song. I think it is. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> oh, this is my race setup. So this is actually the night before, night prior, cuz us runners, we love to take pictures of our race gear. And you can see here I've got Zensa Oh, oh, actually, there's a story behind this. So I had avocado socks, and you can see that in this picture. They had holes in them, and they weren't really tall enough, and I didn't really want to wear those avocado socks. So I wore my Zensaw alien socks because I thought the aliens looked a little bit like avocados. So I wore those, and on, then I had to bundle up. <laughs> and then next. That's a picture of frozen grapes. This year I got frozen grapes. That was back in 2020. <laughs> Is that because it was so cold? Yes, it was freezing cold. You can see I had, so I actually brought two right-hand gloves. So I had to <laughs> flip that one over. <laughs> I was a mess in 2020. There was just nothing going right for me in 2020. <laughs> but it worked. I was, my hands were not cold. Oh, here's, is this right before the second causeway? Here's Kay running, a picture of Kay running. This is, this is me smiling because this is at mile 13. This is after the second causeway. Oh, coming down. Uh, yeah, this coming one... down. So we're about to reach the finish line. But you can see, I thought I was being cute with some cat socks that I got off Amazon. Little compression socks that are way too thick. 
you can just see that thick layer of leggings and everything. This <laughs> was that was the year you overheated. Overheated, yep, and got new shoes the week of the race. Bad idea. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> No. Ow. Ow, 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 ow. Yes. Now this next picture, look at you over here. So excelling past the finish line with your avocado. Oh, it disappeared. Oh, hold on. Oh, there one. it is. Okay. See? Yep. I was wearing avocado Zen saw socks, actually. See, it only took and two years to realize you can't overdress. Yes. For this app. And then there's a, I love this picture of us with yeah. you and there, there's me and Kay at the end of the 2020 race, the avocado race of wa guac a mile in my shoes with her sign. I love that sign. It wasn't until you sent me this picture that I remember that you had that sign and I loved it. Every oh, single yeah. bit of it. That was my favorite sign. Yeah. That's so funny. It was oh. a nice surprise on the course to see my mom waving this giant sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so before we kind of wrap this up what is your favorite part about this race and would you recommend it to anybody I would definitely recommend it because there's always people and cheering why? you on whatever corner you're turning there's people cheering you on there's live music all along the course and yeah. it's just a great fun race and it's more be more than because I'm here home I would still travel mm -hmm. for this race I would definitely travel. You're along the water the whole time. It's We do live in an absolutely beautiful area of the Space Coast. I think it would be neat if, like, there was a rocket launch at some point, you know. If, mm -hmm. Oh, you know what? That's right. Yeah. It's actually a Boston qualifier. Yeah. So it's a, oh, it's yeah. a USAFT, USAT, USATF um, qualifier for Boston. So it's on, I think, oh, I don't know who ranked it, top 10 to run in, for a Boston qualifier along, like, for views and how beautiful it is. And it's a hit or miss with weather, weather to be honest with you, but it is one of those. It's still not snowing. It's not snowing. Yeah. It's not 10 degrees. Right. There's one year that, you know, I got close to that with <laughs> hurricane winds. But, I mean, other than that, like, maybe you'll get some rain. Like, this past year we had – to shut people off because of how rainy and the lightning and the thunder, but it's really a hit or miss. That's the first year I've seen that actually happen. So yeah, no, I definitely agree with you. It's a huge race. It's wonderful every single year. And I would recommend, highly recommend it to anybody looking for a race. Florida's open. We're racing. So next year we'll definitely have the race and it'll probably be bigger. So yeah. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Now, before we go, okay, I got, one, two, two questions, just okay for fun. <laughs> if you could travel anywhere, where would you head to? Oh, I want to go to Canada. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. It's beautiful up there. It's just beautiful, <laughs> and you just see these pictures of Canada. I, I mean, and... I agree. It is gorgeous. <laughs> I love it though. It's a big place. Yeah. We're specifically in Canada. Yeah, we're specifically in Canada. <laughs> Banff, Canada. Banff, okay. Mm -hmm. Is that in the mountains? Yeah. Okay, it's I agree. Yeah. I, I definitely agree. <laughs> You'll have to look it up, yeah. I, I love it. And then, I already asked you what your favorite race is. But now, since we're a year almost from the pandemic, we're going to talk about toilet paper. So, oh. when you use toilet paper, do you fold it or do you wad? I wad. Yeah. <laughs> you know what? I honestly think that's the only answer I'm truthfully going to be able to get. Because if you yeah. fold, you're probably a liar. Nobody has time for that. Oh, yeah. Who no, does that? Well, that thank you so painful. much. <laughs> thank you so much, Kay, for coming on the podcast today. I really enjoyed it. We got all our medals. We've earned these. And I can't wait to see what the year of the coconut brings for you and I both. Hopefully, it's a, hopefully it's a good weather year. So hopefully. thank you, Kay, so much. And we'll thank see you. you soon for another race review. Yay. Bye. <laughs>